Hi guys, my name is Rachel and today we are talking about the Navigator Trilogy. I do five minute reviews on books and for series I get a little bit more time just depending on um, how much there is to talk about the books. Um, but the Navigator Trilogy is written by Ian McNamee. He is an Irishman from Northern Ireland and I have literally never heard anyone else talk about the series. I've never heard of anyone else reading the series, never seen it on booktube. Um, and it's possibly because it's from Ireland, possibly because it's middle grade. I'm not sure. But I was given the first book as a gift in middle school and didn't find out about the second, second and the third one until I was an adult. Um, but I, even as an adult finishing up the trilogy, I really enjoyed these and I want to talk about them today. So the Navigator trilogy is about a group of resistors on an island in time, um, whose sole purpose is to fight against the evil harsh who want to take over the world, steal time, and turn everything into a frozen wasteland. Our protagonist's name is Owen, and he finds himself awake when everyone else goes to sleep except the resistors. So he hooks up with the resistors, and he's like 12, of course, middle grade. And he goes on these romp-roaring adventures with the resistors and other islands in time as they're trying to defeat the harsh. And um, it's just a really fun series. Now... Pros I have, I'm going to start with the con. One con I have with this series is that the villain, the big bad, um, they're set up in the first two books as like this untouchable evil that um, we don't know how we're going to overcome them, of course. But in the third book, it kind of shifts and there, the magic behind it, there's magic behind it. And there is a backstory that they start setting up in the first book. But I don't think they set it up very well. I think there could have been a lot more development of how he wanted to end the series, which was on this more magical note and less of just like a pure defeat, but there's a magical solution. He did start to set it up in the first book. The second book, he kind of ignored it. I mean, he gave it a little bit of time, but he spent more time world building in the second book than then we get to the third book and we've got to defeat them and we've got to win against them. And I don't, it happened in three pages and it just, it didn't feel very satisfying to me. Um, but to give it some grace, it is a middle grade book. So a lot of middle schoolers and, you know, that age group aren't going to be as upset about that as I am. Um, two pros that I have for the series are one, the magic system, which isn't really a magic system. I would say it's more a science based system. There is some fantastical elements, a little bit of magic, but it's all based on science and magnetism and time and how that works. And if we extrapolate, you know, the science behind time and relativity to its nth degree, what will it look like? And I don't feel like you get that a lot in middle grade stories. I feel like it's just your cut and dry magic. Um, and I really appreciated Ian McNamee really taking the time to not speak down to his age audience range people, but to really give them something that they could chew on and think about and you really don't get an explanation of what's going on. You know there's some scientific explanation, but you don't really know how, and that's okay. You just kind of rock with it. The second thing I really enjoyed about this series is the relationships between our main characters. Our main protagonist is Owen, but we have about three other characters who work with Owen and are really close with him, and we've got two girls and two boys. Now, typically where this would go is they would pair off at the end, and they would kiss, and be lovey-dovey, and you know they're going to be together forever. This is a middle grade story, and I get really tired of society and authors and publishers shoving romance down the throats of kids that don't need to be thinking about that stuff, and they wouldn't be unless they're told that they need to think about it. And Ian McNamee, at the end of the series, you do have some coupling off, but it's not in a couple atmosphere. It's in a friendship atmosphere, and it's with the knowledge that, hey, these guys might could grow up and fall in love, and, you know, and stay together forever, but they don't have to. Right now, they're really good friends, and that's okay, too. And I really, really appreciated that. So, Ian McNamee, thank you for not making romance part of your middle grade story. Now, who I think would enjoy this series? If you're an adult and you, you don't enjoy reading middle grade, don't pick it up. If you are um, an adult and you read uh, YA and some middle grade, I do think you would enjoy this. I think boys especially would get a kick out of it if they are um, looking for something different. It is definitely different than your typical YA magic system story. I do think if you have an interest in time travel and time um, theory and how we can expand on that and grow on that, I do think you would really enjoy this series. I personally am going to give it a... 3.8 out of 5 stars. 
it wasn't quite a four. I want to give it a four because it was really, really good. Definitely wasn't five star, but it was really, really good. Um, but there was just some things about it, just the way that the story was thought out. And um, there definitely wasn't a lot of character development, but again, no grade. So I'm going to stick with a 3.8 out of five stars. Thank you guys for watching my review of the Navigator Trilogy. I will see you all in the next video. Okay, so I want to do a thing where at the end of my five minute reviews, I just do like a gush, rant, rave thing. It's spoiler film. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. I loved Owen and Caddy. They were like the best friends that you always want and they loved each other, but it was so platonic and they were just really connected and then whenever they were torn apart, it was really heartbreaking and you could feel for it. I loved Owen's mom's character development. She was literally attacked by the harsh and her heart was frozen, like giving me frozen vibes over here on an Elsa. I thought the ending was stupid. I thought the fact that Owen could just walk onto the ship and talk to the little harsh boy and like, he's like, okay, I talked to this little harsh boy who's just all alone on the ship. He's not being protected at all. Owen could kill him if he wanted to. Owen does all the brain work of figuring out what's going on and how to defeat them by himself. And then he just chucks the book into the clock and that's the end of it. They just all disappear. It was very, very unsatisfying. I wanted an Anna and Elsa melt your frozen heart story, but I didn't get it. I didn't even talk about the swearing in my review. Okay, Irish people, right? They swear all the time. I mean, this is a stereotype, but look at this. Look at this. This is a middle grade story and he's got cuss words and my middle grade heart couldn't take it. So I crossed all the cuss words out of this book, y'all. It's hilarious. I used to do this all the time as a kid. I would get a book and I would read a book and I would love a book and I would think that was the end of the story. It was just one book. I didn't realize that there was like trilogies and series and things that went on forever. So I read this book, loved it. Didn't Google if there was a second or a third. The story is not finished and we don't have to know and it's totally okay. And then I become an adult and I Google and I realize that there are two more books. That happens to me a lot now. That's why I had to finish the series as an adult. I think I'm getting used to this.